This video looks at a new wind turbine design to see if it can meet its promise of being a game changer for renewable energy by increasing power output by two and a half times. Since the 7th century, wind power has been used by humans to power things. In these early days, this was using windmills to grind corn, flour, and to pump water. Around a thousand years later, wind power was used to generate electricity for the first time with what today looks like a pretty archaic design. It wasn't until 1903 that wind turbines began to have fewer blades and spin slower, due to the work of Paul Lecure and the Society of Wind Electricians. Then, in the last 100 years, the development of wind power has been unprecedented, with turbines getting larger and larger, the biggest of which are now approaching the height of the Eiffel Tower. But one thing hasn't changed much, they all tend to use one large spinning rotor with a set of blades. So is this really the best solution? A new company called Windcatcher don't seem to think so. In this video, I want to cover the theory of their idea and make some of my own points as to why I think maybe the age-old configuration will prove superior. For context, the planned Windcatcher device uses a 320 meter tall matrix of beams to support around 115 individual turbines, each of which have a diameter of around 30 meters. Now, the reason for this design is because the smaller turbines should be able to spin faster without getting damaged which solves an interesting problem that wind turbines face. To understand why, let's look at how power is generated by a wind turbine. To roughly calculate how much power a wind turbine will produce, you can use a simplified equation. The first part of this equation may seem a bit counterintuitive, so we won't dwell on it for long, but you start with a half times a performance coefficient. That half comes from the equation for kinetic energy and is something to do with special relativity, but hey, I'm an engineer, not a physicist. Then the performance coefficient accounts for the fact you can't take 100% of the energy out of the wind, otherwise it would stop on the other side of the turbine and no more wind could pass through. This is known as Bet's limit and is about 0.6, or 60% of the wind's total energy. The other parts of this equation are density of air, the swept area of the turbine, and the wind speed to the power of 3. What this little 3 means is that if the wind speed increases just a little bit, the power output increases a lot. However, it's not quite that simple, as wind turbines can only spin so fast before they get damaged. So in wind speeds above around 11 meters per second, the wind turbines will tilt or feather their blades to stop themselves spinning any faster, which means they don't output any more power up until their maximum operating speed of around 30 meters per second. This is the fundamental issue the wind catcher wants to resolve. By using tougher, smaller turbines, they hope to keep operating at full power right up until 30 meters per second. This would be great, as this graph shows the wind speeds often go over 11 meters per second out at sea, and there is a lot of power that isn't currently being captured as wind turbines prevent themselves from spinning any faster past that point. In fact, if we imagine an ideal wind turbine that doesn't have to feather its blades at all up until 30 meters per second, and instead manages to capture all of that extra power, according to my calculations, the turbine would capture 2.6 times as much power, which is roughly the same figure provided by Windcatcher on their website. However, I feel it is sadly not quite that simple. See, although the turbines may be tougher, they would also have to rotate much faster to capture the same amount of power. This is why current wind turbines with 30 meter diameters still tilt their blades to slow down after around 11 meters per second too. Images on Windcatcher's website do show some small propellers that could probably handle the required speeds, but they would likely be expensive and inefficient for wind energy capturing. Without trying to sound too much like a cynic, the massive matrix would also likely add so much extra drag at these high wind speeds, the structure would struggle to even stay upright. This is a problem already affecting many offshore wind turbine projects. And finally, because some of the blades are close to the sea floor, the wind speed for them will be considerably lower due to the boundary effect, 
This happens because of friction between the air and the water, which slows down the air that's close to the sea. Although I don't think this project will be the one to revolutionise the wind sector, I would love to be proved wrong. Either way, I hope this video has taught you something about the world of wind turbines, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe, and share this video with someone you think may enjoy it. Sorry for the irregularity of uploads, I've been super busy moving house, being unwell, and transitioning through key milestones at work.